We're going to go through some conceptual questions specifically related to electric flux through a closed surface and Gauss's law. So here is our first question. What do you think the answer is? Now, I'm realizing I did not specify in the last video, a positive electric flux is going to mean more electric field coming out. So more electric field lines coming out of the surface than going in. Negative is going to be more going in more electric field lines going in. And zero is, means the same number of field lines in and out. The correct answer here is A. If we trace any one of these electric field lines that comes into the cylinder and then exits back out of the cylinder. Even if it comes in the circular and then out the side, if the electric field line goes in at one point and back out at another, that means no electric flux. Now, if we think of this in terms of what we derived for flux through a closed surface, the electric flux through a closed surface can be determined by knowing how much charge is located within the surface. And then epsilon naught is our constant. Well, if there is a positive charge inside of our surface, then we would have field lines pointing outwards. If there was a negative charge, so if we had a positive charge, its electric field lines would point away from it. And so any surface that we had, the electric field lines would be pointing outwards. If we had a negative charge, all these electric field lines would point towards it. And so we'd have more electric field lines pointing inwards. Another way to look at it is this integral of E dot dA, the electric field and area vectors, when they line up, or at least their components line up in the same direction, the dot product gives you a positive answer. If they have components that lie in opposite directions, the dot product gives you a negative answer. So either way, you want to look at it, it is fine. In the example of our picture here on this question, there cannot be a charge in there because there's no electric field lines originating or ending within that cylindrical surface. They're all pointing away from something over here. And so the lines go in, and back out, which gives us a net electric flux of zero. This example of having positive charge would be an example of a net positive flux. Having a negative charge in there would be a net negative flux. And again, ultimately what that boils down to is whether you end up with more electric field lines coming out of your three-dimensional closed surface or more field lines going in. Let's look at the next question. What do you think here?
this term Gaussian surface simply means the closed surface that we're talking about the flux through. The correct answer here is B. And that is simply because there is more charge to Q inside of B. So Gauss's law, it is the integral through a closed surface of E dot dA, but it also always equals the charge located within the surface divided by epsilon naught, a constant. And so, since sphere B, even though sphere B is bigger, it encloses more charge. If you recall, when we draw electric field lines, the number of lines we draw is representative of how strong the electric field would be. So for example, on the point charge that's just one Q at the top, I can draw some lines. And to distinguish pictorially that this bottom charge has twice the charge, I would need to draw twice as many lines compared to Q. Having more charge means it's going to create a stronger electric field. And therefore, as the electric field goes through the surface, there will be more lines passing through it. The size of this Gaussian surface does not matter. All that matters is that it is, is a closed surface. We could have had a smaller sphere down here, and the same number of lines would pass through it. So even if our sphere had a radius of r instead of 2r, the flux in B is the same regardless of the size of sphere we draw. So again, whatever our closed surface is that we're talking about the flux through is called our Gaussian surface. It's just the term we use for it because this up here is Gauss's law. So a Gaussian surface is the closed surface we're talking about the electric flux through. It's not a charged object. It's not a real object. It's just an imaginary surface that we're talking about electric field lines passing through. Okay, we have another question here. What do you think about this one? The correct answer here oops, is E. So, oops, we have our sphere. So again, the sphere is just a closed surface, an imaginary surface to talk about electric field lines passing through. So if I put the charge in the exact middle, so at the origin, I'm gonna just draw some lines. These would represent the electric field lines for this point charge. If I put the charge at the origin, it makes it such that the electric field will be 
the same value as it passes through the surface out here. But if I put, say, my point charge at some other random point, and I were to draw all of these lines again, the same number of lines are going to pass through that spherical surface. They're not going to be uniform, meaning the electric field up here closer to the charge is going to be stronger as it passes through the surface than, say, down here where it's farther away. But they still pass through that spherical surface. Therefore, we're still getting the same amount of electric flux. That's what we mean when we're saying this electric flux through a closed surface can totally be determined by knowing simply how much charge is physically located within the surface. As long as that charge is physically inside that sphere, we will have the same amount of flux. Okay. And that continues to be true regardless of where I put the charge. I could put the charge way down at the bottom. All electric field lines I might choose to draw would pass through the sphere. What ends up being the case is when we go back and look at flux in terms of the electric field and area, this ends up being a complicated integral. The electric field not being uniform, we would need to be able to integrate over the surface of the sphere. But we don't need to because we know this electric flux depends simply on the charge inside. So as long as the charge is inside, we're going to have the same amount of electric flux through this surface. One more question. What do you think about this one? So the correct answer here is A. A is the one that is most absolutely not true. Now with our dipole, we know electric field lines are going to point positive to negative. We'll have field lines coming out, coming in, looping around, looping around. What this question is getting at is we know electric flux is the integral of E dot dA, but because we're talking about the flux through this spherical surface, this Gaussian surface, the flux is also equal to the charge located inside the surface divided by epsilon naught. Q in here is positive Q plus the negative Q. So Qn is zero. The electric flux through this spherical surface is zero. And it's natural to want to say, since the electric flux is also equal to the integral of E dot dA, that then the electric field is going to be zero. But that's not the case, right? We have electric field lines coming through, coming through, coming in, coming in, going out, coming back in, going out, coming back in. So having a net flux of zero simply means that the same number 
of electric field lines go out and the same number, oops, I didn't finish my word, go out and come in. It doesn't mean the same line always goes out and comes back in, just the same number, the same flow. It is true that there could be locations where the electric field was zero on the surface of this sphere, but it's certainly not gonna be zero everywhere. And that's why A is the one that is not true.